Hey everyone, Steve here with Muse Themes. I'm back for more with our state transitions widget. We've had lots of requests from users on how to build these more elaborate buttons that have these really unique strokes on them. So as you can see, the stroke kind of appears to move from one end to the other. And it's a little bit complicated to build, but I think once I kind of dissect this file for you, it'll all make a little bit more sense. So let's go into Muse first and look at the file quickly, and I'll show you how these kind of work. So the first thing that we have here on this main transitions button is if we click on it, of course, it's in a state button. Whenever we're going to have multiple things animating or clickable at the same time, we need to put them in a state button. Within that, we have a rectangle, which of course is this center bit here that I'm scaling. Then we have this group, and the group is where we have all of these outline kind of strokes. So let me ungroup that for a sec. And I'm just going to pull them all apart and show you what they are. So this is why it's always tough sometimes to work within a state button because things kind of move together even though they're not. But as you can see, I can actually drag these components apart and you can kind of get a sense of how they're actually built. So if I click on one, you can see that it actually has a fill applied. And right now this fill is using an SVG file. So let's go ahead and build this. I'm just gonna use a PNG to make it a little bit easier for people in Photoshop, but let me create a new site and I'll just leave it blank and I'll show you how this is done. It'll make a lot more sense. So the first thing we need to do is build graphics to go in those really thin frames. And so what I'll do is go to Photoshop, let's create a new document and I'm gonna make it about four pixels wide, which will be a little bit of a thicker stroke. And let's set the height at 600 and click OK. So now you've got this really thin graphic. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to, I'm just going to use the fill or rectangular fill here and let's just draw a box and kind of cover approximately a little bit less than half of this stroke area. I'm going to use red for this example because it stands out a little bit or you know what, I'll use black so it looks a little bit more like the example. Okay. And now what I'm gonna do, I'll zoom in a little bit on this box, is we need to duplicate it and drag it down to the bottom. But we need to make sure that we leave a gap in between. So I've duplicated the box and I'm just dragging it down and there. So what we have is we have these two boxes and we have a gap in the middle. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hide the background so that our gap is actually a transparent section in this stroke. And now all I'll do is save this out. So I'll just go save for web and I'm gonna save this as a PNG. Make sure to save it as something that has transparency. And I'm just gonna save it to folder and let's just call it transparent stroke. Okay, so now that we've got that set up, let's jump back into Muse. And what we need to do is draw a rectangle and let's make it the same width as we made that graphic. So if I use our sizing options here, we have the width, let's set that to four. Now we have the height. I made that graphic 600 pixels, but let's set the height to 300, to approximately half the size. Now I'm just gonna remove the stroke from this box. So we just have this empty rectangle on the page. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see it better. Okay, within this empty rectangle, this is where we need to set the fill and we're gonna set it to an image. And let's select that graphic that we just made. Okay, so now our graphic is set as the fill. I'm just going to actually put the position of this also to the top center. And you know what I'll do? I'll even scale this box down a little bit. It looks like we can kind of see the gap at the bottom of our box here, and that's not what we want. We wanna make sure the gap is going to transition through when we animate this. So let's set this to about four pixels wide, and now we've got, let's say, 250 pixels tall. Okay, perfect. So now what we wanna do with this is we wanna select the state and let's select the rollover state and we need to change in the rollover state our fill and our fill positioning. So before it was set to the top, now let's set it to the bottom. Okay, so what this means is that as this graphic shifts from the top to the bottom, you're going to see that transparent block slide up through it. So the next step here is I think we can go ahead and get our animations rolling. So let's go to our library here and we need a state transitions widget. And let's just drag this out onto the page. I'll delete out this demo box since we don't need it. Okay, so what we have to do in here, if you've seen this first video, was we need to enter the graphic style name that we've created for our box. We didn't create one yet, so let's select the box. 
Let's go to our graphic styles and let's create a new style. Let's just call this box for simplicity, or you know what, I'll call it stroke. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's go into our widget and let's animate the graphic style called stroke. We'll set our transition time to one second, which will be a little bit slow. And now we have an easing style. Let's just set this to ease for now. Okay, so now just with that setting applied, we should be able to preview this in the browser and mouse over this box and see it transition. There, so it worked perfectly. So now that we have one of these set up, now we can actually start duplicating these around the page to make those more elaborate buttons. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit and what I'll do is just select this and I'm going to kind of tilt it to a 45 degree angle and I'm just gonna drag and duplicate more of them out. So let's tilt this one and we'll kind of align them roughly in place. You probably won't do this quite as quickly as me so your box will look a little bit nicer but I'll just do this fast for the sake of a demo. Okay, and now I'm just gonna turn one more Okay, so now that we've done that, I'm going to select them all and just group them for simplicity's sake. And because we have multiple elements that we want to kind of all animate at the same time or be all clickable at the same time, we should put this within a state button. So let's go into our standard widget library with Muse, drag a new state button out on the page. I'm going to delete the text out, delete the circle. Let's scale this up so that that can even fit within. And I'm going to just remove the fill and let's go to the rollover state. Of course, there's a fill applied there. So let's delete all of that. So we have basically an empty state button container. Now, if I move this group into the state button and it'll kind of accept it once I drag it and drop it. And now what this means is if I mouse anywhere in this area, our strokes should all be clickable and they should all be linked. So let's preview this and there. You can see if I move into the box that everything transitions. So this is exactly how we built the button in this demo. Now the only difference here is that we have another element within which is a center fill. So if I jump back to Muse, what we could do now is we could draw a new box and I'll just tilt it so it's uh, rotated a little bit here. I'm gonna set a fill to it. So let's go ahead and set a gray fill. And with, with that box, what I'll do is I'll set a rollover state and let's change the fill to nothing. So we're going from gray to transparent. So what we'll do there is again, create a new graphic style based on that. You can have as many styles as you want and I'll just call that fill. Now let's go ahead and let's duplicate our widget and we'll animate our fill box. We'll leave the transition time set the same and we'll maybe set this to ease in out something a little bit different. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop this into my state button. Okay, and what I'd like to do now ideally is I'd like to group all of these together. So with our rectangle selected, I'm just going to make sure I can click on the group of kind of strokes there. And with those selected, I'm just going to group everything so it's in one nice package there. So now let's go ahead and preview this in the browser. And if I did everything right, we should have a really consistent animation that kind of matches our demo that we did. So there, it is working. I have a little bit of a gap there that's creating a bit of a timing issue, but this is how we made that button. And the interior fills on ones like this with the blur and the plus sign that shifts up, all this is is it's an image and the top half of the image is the unblurred it looks like a dock or a lake something. And the bottom half of the image is the blurry version with the plus sign. And what we did is we animated the transition with the positioning going from the top to the bottom. So the box is just shifting up inside that frame into place. And then of course we have these strokes wrapping it on the outside just like this. So that's an advanced demo of how to use our state transitions button. It is a really powerful widget for being such a small little panel, but you can do a lot with it. And if you can kind of think outside the box with it, I think most users are surprised at how strong and powerful it actually is. 
give us a shout if this doesn't make sense and we'll go ahead and post our working file for this demo so that you can dissect all of these options. What we'll do is just, we'll remove the widgets from the side so that we're not giving away all the widgets for free, but you have all the demo assets available and you can just go ahead and drop in the widgets and apply the styles based on the names that we have in our graphic styles panel. So that's it. Thanks again for watching and enjoy. Cheers.